Okay, so as always, we'll start with a free body diagram. Um, and in this situation, I'm envisioning something, this bucket at the end of the string, at the top of the circle, maybe spinning around like that. So uh, what I want to draw a free body diagram of is really the water inside of the bucket. Um, although sometimes thinking about a blob of water uh, can be a little bit tricky. So instead of a blob of water, let, let's think of it as a little uh, person. So there's a little person inside of this bucket, and we're swinging this bu bucket around in a circle, and uh, the person's upside down there, and just barely they're not falling out of the bucket. So if we draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on that person, um, certainly the Earth is pulling down on that person, so that's the force of gravity. And then you should always ask yourself, what's touching the object? Well, what's touching it is the bucket right here. The surface of the bottom of the bucket is touching the person's feet, and so that's going to push on the person's feet. And since the person's upside down, that push is going to be a downward push. And of course, we're talking about normal force here. Normal force is the name of the force that a surface exerts on an object. And so we really have two downward forces in this picture. And we don't have any upward forces. Um, it, it's really, I can't think of an object that's touching the person in this bucket that would pull the person up or exert an upward force on the person. Um, there may be some sideways forces, um, but they're not really relevant to our problem because we're only interested in forces that point parallel to the radius, or what we call the radial direction or the centripetal direction. So that is our complete free body diagram. So we're going to go now and use our net force equation for circular motion. Um, remember, this symbol means add up the forces that are in your diagram, and also remember that with circular motion, anything that points inward as positive, both of these forces point inward. So they're both going to be positive. That's a little unusual. Nor normally, gravity is negative because it points down. But when you're doing a circular motion problem, we don't really think about up, down, left, or right. We think about inward versus outward. And inward is always positive. So if I add up these forces, I have positive Fn, positive Fg, and then on the other side, mv squared over r. Now, one of the issues in this problem you may have noticed is that no mass is given. Uh, we don't know the mass of the water, or in this case, the little person that's inside the bucket. Well, it turns out you can still solve the problem, even if you don't know the mass. What we're going to have to do, though, is we have an m on the right side of the equation. We need to get an m or m's on the left side of the equation so that mathematically the m's cancel out. So one thing we can do is just um, substitute in the formula for the force of gravity, which is m times g. Gravity always equals m times g. Um, at this point, be careful. You can't cancel out the mass yet. Canceling something out really means dividing both sides of the equation by m. So if we divide by m over here, we divide by m over here. Sure, this cancels out, and this cancels out with this, but there's nothing to cancel out here. So actually, this is, this is an illegal math operation. We simply can't do it. So forget that. Can't do it. Um, we need to think of another way here. So what could we put in for the normal force? Um, it's not equal to mg. It's not opposite mg. It's not balancing mg. So one thing I will do sometimes is think, is there any information in the problem that I haven't used yet? And there is. The fact that it's just barely not falling out. We're at the point where it's about to fall out. Um, we're at that uh, border point between falling out and not falling out. So what effect does that have on the normal force? Well, if the object does finally fall out, it means it has lost contact with the bottom of the bucket. And if it loses contact with the bottom of the bucket, that means that there's no normal force acting on it. The normal force is equal to zero. So this is a special situation where the object is right about to fall out. And if it does fall out, uh, it's going to have a normal force of zero because it won't be touching the bucket anymore. Now you could argue, why do we put in a zero? It hasn't fallen out yet. Okay, well we could put in 0 0.00000000001 because that has a really small normal force. Well, we might as well just put in a zero. So again, the normal force is zero because the person is right at the point of falling out. And if the person falls out, then they're not in contact with the bucket anymore. And so the normal force would be zero. So we're left with mg equals mv squared over r. Now we can cancel out the mass. We can divide both sides by m, and the mass cancels out. We're trying to find uh, speed, so we can rearrange this. v is equal to the square root of gr. 
So it's equal to the square root of 9.8 times 0.75. And let's see what we get when we use the calculator on that. 9.8 times 0.75, and I'm going to take a square root and I get 2.71 meters per second. So if you uh, spin this thing any slower than 2.71 meters per second, uh, the water, or in this case, the person will fall out. Anything faster than that, um, it's not gonna fall out.